Welcome, everyone. Welcome, welcome. We're so happy to have you here for another AIHM wellness webinar on this Friday, July 1st. We're going to have an amazing presentation with Dr. Yvette Miller uh, around heart math, a tool for resilience. So we're excited about that. And as you're um, joining us, everyone's coming in, I like to just remind everyone uh, we're the Academy of Integrative Health and Medicine, a global interprofessional integrative health association working to transform healthcare, body, mind, spirit, community, and planet. And all of our um, webinars are recorded and we put it on our YouTube channel for those of you who want to review the amazing information you're going to get today and all of our past webinars. Um, you can even subscribe and get notifications when that happens. So we welcome you to do that. Um, also like to remind everyone that we are accepting applications for our 1000 hour two year fellowship program in integrative health and medicine. We've got a cohort, cohort 13 will be starting this October 2022. So you're welcome to join um, or to reach out and learn a little bit more if that's something you've been um, thinking about um, doing. We welcome you to explore that. So today I like I have the pleasure and honor of introducing Dr. Yvette Marie Miller. Um, she's the executive medical officer for the American Red Cross. She oversees donor eligibility determination, blood product and donor management, many areas of expertise and just a few here, donor recruitment and retention in the black community, meeting the transfusion needs of patients with sickle cell disease and leading conversations on addressing structural racism and bias and the impact on healthcare and the social determinants of health. And as the co-chair of the black indigenous and people of color AIHM board committee, she is leading our efforts and those conversations that are happening in within the academy and leading that transformation that we are currently undergoing. So a huge welcome to you. Thanks for joining us, Yvette. Yep, and yep. I will pull up your slides okay. here. All right. Thank you so much, Jess. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful to be here this afternoon with you all this afternoon. I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina, and the weather is getting kind of sketchy, so, <laughs> but we're going to roll with it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so this afternoon, we're going to um, share some, I'm going to share some information about the resilience advantage in relationship to heart math and help you understand the skills for personal and professional effectiveness using the heart math technique. Next slide, please. So you just covered um, a little bit about me. Um, I am also, and, and some of you may know about this. So I started my career actually as an RN and then went on to medical school. But one of the things that I am exceptionally proud of and that you'll learn more about at the annual meeting is um, AccuDetox, which is a type of supportive um, treatment or tool used um, to support people going through addiction treatment It's also used um, in relationship to trauma, as well as in disaster management. So just a little sneak preview of what you'll learn about the AccuDetox technique at the annual meeting. Next slide, please. So I'm gonna to focus today on um, the heart math technique. And what you see here are just some of the many well-respected um, journals that heart math research has been published in over the last 25 to 30 years. So this is a scientifically based um, technique or tool that's used to really support um, resilience. Next slide, please. So some of the reasons and some of the objectives that um, we're going to cover today as we talk about um, heart math is that this tool um, can increase personal resilience and energy levels, something that we all need. Um, leverage your ability to think clearly under pressure and discern appropriate solutions to problems. Increase your ability to maintain situ situational awareness. Diminish symptoms of personal and professional stress um, such as confusion, fatigue, and sleep disturbance. Basically, what those things describe is burnout. Um, and improve times and that little pop up reaction times and coordination. Next slide, please. 
So let's talk about the concept of resilience. Next slide, please. So resilience is thought to be the capacity to prepare for, recover from, and adapt in the face of stress, challenge, or adversity. So I think we are all familiar with the aspect of resilience to recover from or adapt in the face of stress or challenge. But one of the things that we don't necessarily think so much about when we're talking about resilience is that we can actually prepare our bodies for when stress occurs, if we're going into a um, situation. And to be quite honest, it, the work that we do as healthcare providers is a natural state of, of stress. Sometimes it's more stressful than others, but stress in relationship to our jobs and our professional profession of healthcare providers, stress is unavoidable. So using some of the techniques that we're going to discuss as, as I move on, you can learn to build your resilience capacity um, and sustain your energy. So I love the figure on the right where it shows batteries and we're all familiar with batteries, particularly now that you know everybody has some device that has to remain charged at all times, of course. And so we are keenly aware of uh, when a battery is low. And so we can, we can feel in our bodies um, when our resistance is low, when we are on edge and anxious and can't necessarily identify what is making us on edge and anxious. It's just that, you know, our capacity um, for, uh, for dealing with stress is low. So again, this, these techniques that I'm going to discuss can help us prepare for as, as regenerate and re-energize ourselves in stressful situations. Please. Again, most of us as providers and people that are interested in healthcare understand that what keeps us moving and going is, is energy, ionic potential. So basically we are energy symptoms, uh, systems that expand and renew energy. And again, with these techniques that we're going to discuss, um, the heart math technique, we can learn to build resistance and capacity and sustain our energy. Next slide, please. So let's talk about our domains of resilience. And most of us are familiar with these four domains, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. And, you know, at any given time, we can be all over the place. We can be, you know, emotionally flat. We could have, or, or emotionally, you know, elevated, have no physical energy or be really, really energized you know, be mentally focused or, you know, one of the things that we are certainly concerned about and talk about now is that brain fog that um, many people who are recovering from COVID have and understanding that that brain fog and sort of that mental fogginess can be, you know, a long-term um, post um, syndrome. Um, and in terms of spirituality, um, that helped and for many of us that spirituality and that's defined by however we define it for ourselves, you know, can help us really stay centered. And so when we are in coherence right, and sort of working at our most resilient, these four systems are in coherence. So let's take a look at the, the physical, um, uh, there's some great, um, uh, information coming in and statements coming in in the chat. Um, one person just said that um, heart math is now being taught in medical school. That's fantastic. I would love to talk more about that and what that looks like um, as part of your medical training. So in terms of physical resistance, we are, we are generally, you know, at our highest functioning when we have endurance. And this doesn't mean you have to be an endurance athlete. It just means that, you know, you spend some time, whatever it means for you, you know, being physical. You know, some people love to get outside and garden. Some people love to walk. Some people love to stay inside, do, do dancing, you know, or, or walk inside. So there's so, chair yoga. There's so many things that we can do um, to incre increase our 
um, endurance that doesn't have to be labeled as, as exercise. And also when we increase our strength, more and more and more we're hearing that, you know, for a person to be truly healthy, you know, besides working on our cardiovascular system, we also have to do some types of strength training. And again, this is very simple, no, no barbells, involved. There are so many things that we have, you know, existing in the corners of our homes that we can use to do some, some weight bearing. And of course, you know, just using our own body weight um, to increase our strength and do that, that weight bearing. You know, in terms of emotional flexibility, when we are at our most flexible, we are able to positively. Again, what we, and again, we're still not on the, the, the complete downside of COVID. And so COVID just layered on top of our regular existing things that challenge us. And, you know, people who have, you know, and who have, who have been vaccinated and um, who have had a booster are still being exposed and coming down with, with COVID. So it, it's very disconcerting that you've done everything that you possibly take care of yourself, maintain your health, and then you get exposed to COVID. And you know what is upsetting about that is you have, in many cases, you have no idea where that exposure came from because um, you know, we're not doing contract contact tracing anymore. So you know there's things that can keep us upset all the time. But again, employing some of these techniques that we're going to get into can help us just say, you know what, that's just one of the things that happens. I'm not going to get on edge about it. I'm just going to just sort of keep it in the middle of the road, as my mother used to say, and just sort of walk with grace and just try to deal with it the best that I can. And when we are at our most um, flexible emotionally, we are able to self-regulate, meaning that every day, it's likely that something will happen that will upset you. Um, sometimes it's small things, little things, but in general, it's, no, it's something that we don't have a lot of control over. So again, these techniques can help us just put things into perspective and um, remain emotionally flexible. In terms of uh, mental flexibility, when we are at our best in terms of resilience, we can, can our attention span can be really focused. Again, there's so many things that distract us on any given day. Um, some things that we have control over, a lot of things that we don't have control over. You know, you're going about, you know, doing your everyday activities and something breaks in and you have to put that aside and quickly pivot and do something else. And then when you try to sort of regain your composure and go back to doing what it is that you, you know, were intentionally doing before, sometimes you just sort of can't just refocus your mind. So again, this technique can help us, you know, increase our attention span, again, our ability to focus and also our ability to, to incorporate multiple points of view. <clears throat> and this one is really important, incorporating multiple points of view. As we continue to elevate the conversation where we talk about you know, cultural competence, we talk about, um, again, and address conversations around diversity, equity, and inclusion. That's exactly what we're doing when we talk about DEI work is really incorporating and understanding and um, having respect for other points of view. So when we're anxious, living on the edge, it's much easier to be literally self-centered when we just don't have that capacity for resilience. So. Heart math can, can help us again have those areas of resilience. And then in terms of spirit, spirituality or spiritual flexibility, it can help us really hone in and, and identify and be true to our values and those things that are important to us that really speak to our humanity as well as into the humanity of other folks. And so we are better able to tolerate others' values and beliefs that may not be congruent with ours, but you know everybody has their own space and we have to meet people where they are. So when we are in coherence with that little circle at the center, we're more or less, you know, balanced in the physical, emotional, and mental and spiritual um, spheres of our lives. Next slide, please. So let's move on and talk about energy balance. So there's a constant expenditure of energy in everything that we do, including when we are sleeping. So balance of, of adequate rest and recovery lead, um, help us be resistant to burnout, 
errors, health challenges, and um, diminished performance and diminished capacity. So each and every one of us knows what it feels hopefully, um, to have that deep and intentional restful sleep where you just get up in the morning, you just stretch and yawn and, you know, you just do your little meditation or do whatever your routine is before you get out of bed and you know you are prepared for the day. Each and every one of us knows what it is to go to bed and wake up just as exhausted as you were before you went to bed. And so when we don't have that capacity to get that deep and adequate, you know, restful sleep, we don't have the capacity to recover. And then that's when burnout occurs. I recently um, did a presentation about self-care and how that helps us become, you know, more resistant to burnout. And certainly my own personal practice with heart math is absolutely to do that, to, um, to help me be resilient and is my number one go-to for self-care. Um, but when you, you know, sort of are at your balance in energy, you are better able to meet, you know, the challenges of life as well as the challenges of, um, of work. Next slide, please. So, so actually, this is a slide, one of those that's um, hit the um, click through it, um, just so all of it will populate. There you go. There's another one. And then there's one more. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Excellent, thank you. <laughs> and this was best for me, of course, when I was controlling the slides myself, but as I said, a storm is coming our way in Charlotte. So I wanted to turn this over to Jess so that she could, could run it for me. So again, thank you so much, Jess. So let's look at the stress resilience and performance graph. And so many of us um, in our healthcare training are familiar with this graph and that when we have a challenge of some sort, most of us, again, a challenge in relationship to our training, um, when we have just, you know, sort of a, a, a low level of stress or challenge, you know, we're able to be resilient, we, will be able, we have enough energy, you know, to meet that challenge, we embrace it, it improves our performance. And, and, and many of us, um, as we you know, some of us are better at handling the stress of challenges than others. And so different people peak in terms of when they are at their maximum performance. And so as we, you know, continue along that, this continuum of, you know, the stress is continuing, um, then we meet our maximum level of efficiency. And many of us know, you know, if you're preparing for an event, you know, a, a wedding, or you're preparing for, you know, this high powered performance, or, you know, you're going to meet someone, you know, you got a brand new date, you're going to meet somebody you've never met before, you want to be looking good, smelling good. And so you want everything about you to be perfection. That's stressful. <laughs> so you got to sort of allow to leave your real self behind and sort of just put on sort of your best face. So that can be stressful for people. But again, I'm just, I'm just throwing a little fun in. But when we have something that we really have to pre prepare for, we know that there's that maximum point at which we're getting all the slides together, we're getting all the references together, everything is just working on point. And then something happens, we have to put that aside, perhaps, to deal with something else. And then, you know, you look up and you realize that, you know, it's two days before the performance or three days before you have to do this presentation and you haven't finished the slide deck yet. And so then you get into the hyperactive stage where your resilience, you're upset, you're anxious, you're not really sure what to do, you forget about where you put your references, all kinds of things that if you had to, you know, had plenty of time to get it done, it would have been just sort of smooth sailing. But then you get to this point where you're just sort of hyperactive, not thinking clearly, doing a lot of things, picking up, mixing up the slides. You can tell that this is personal for me because this has happened. So I'm speaking from, um, speaking from experience. And then when you ultimately, you get things done, but literally the day before the presentation, you're exhausted. Um, and so then you just sort of start to break down you know, emotionally, you're rushing around, you don't have enough energy, and you really have to try to figure out where am I going to get the energy from to actually do this high powered presentation that I had been pre preparing for and was excited to do. But now I'm just exhausted because so I'm sort of on the trailing edge of my energy. Next slide, please. Oh, that's the curve. 
So now we're going to talk about emotions that are depleting and renewing. So go to the next slide, please, Jess. So this slide for me is if something happened and we couldn't get through the rest of this presentation, this is one of the most important slides because self-awareness is essential. We need to know those things in our lives that give us energy, that revs us up. And we also need to know those things and those people that um, that deplete our those situations, those people, you know, those things that deplete our energy as well, those things and those people that energize us. But self awareness is absolutely critical in knowing, you know, the kinds of things that you need to do to be at your best. And so I explain this self awareness about what's going on. I call it. I say you know, self-awareness and things that we need to know about ourselves is an inside job. So while us as healthcare providers, we're constantly focused on meeting the needs of people um, external to us, we have to spend time being inwardly focused on ourselves and what we need to live our best and healthiest lives and stick to that and honor that. There are always going always to be situations that occur where you have to put the things that you use to and that you participate in to care for yourself on the back burner, but that should be a rare occurrence. And it's not being hedonistic, it's not being selfish. Paying attention to yourself is incredibly important because you cannot be present for anyone else if you're not present for yourself. So again, one of the most important steps to being able to stop the energy drains and increase our resilience is to expand our awareness and identify unnecessary energy expenditures. Next slide, please. So, you know, everyone knows what emotions that they experience that deplete them, that make you anxious, that makes you just sort of want to throw your hands up and slam the door and walk off. Um, sometimes it happens every day. Sometimes it doesn't. But again, we have to identify um, the emotions within ourselves that really, you know, take us to the edge of our of our energy. So emotions such as fear, frustration, impatience, anger. Uh, have uh, toxic feelings and cause release of the stress hormones. So when you are experiencing these depleting emotions, many of them put us into the fight or flight cycle where we're bathing our bodies, you know, in adrenaline, in those, in those hormones that, that rev us up and again, keep us on the edge, just sort of jittery and anxious. And so this has been shown to result in impaired mental function because you're at the edge of your energy, you're distracted, you don't feel comfortable. And so you really can't focus. Diminished performance. We all know, I'm sure everybody in here at some, in this audience um, at some point or another have had to take a test. And so when you are anxious, when you are frustrated, when you are impatient, you definitely have test taking anxiety. Um, you know that your capacity and your performance is diminished. We have impaired memory. There could be you know, reduction in muscle mass. So these depleting emotions uh, affect our bodies you know, physiologically. It has shown that you know, there can be brain cell death and accelerated aging. And many of us as, health, as healthcare providers, we have seen in our clients, in our patients, what you know, a life of constant anxiety and stress does to their bodies, does to their faces. You know, it increases you know, stress and wrinkling. So we know that, that this is absolutely true. Next slide, please. So these are just, these were examples of some situations um, that cause stress and the corresponding feel, feelings that typically drain our inner battery and what you currently um, do now to handle them. This was actually supposed to be a practice, um, but we'll just run through the slides. We, we don't, we're not going to set aside time to do breakout sessions and practice. But situations, for example, when um, you're late for work, again, most of us 
have the luxury now of working from home. So for many of us, the being late for work has been taken sort of off the table for us, but there are many people that are still, you know, essential workers um, and essential workers are certainly our, our folks at Starbucks. I'm not a Starbucks person, but trust me, for most people in this country who drink coffee and drink Starbucks, that person behind the counter is one of your essential workers that needs to be at the top of their game. So if they're late for work, everybody's upset. So, you know, when they're late for work, they're anxious. And one of the things that could be done to sort of mitigate that is, you know, call the coworker or call someone and say, I'm going to be, you know, late for work. That helps you sort of get rid of some of that stress and, and anxiety about being late for work. <laughs> you don't know what kind of hell you're going to catch when you're going to get there, but at least you have told somebody to, you know, to expect that I'm going to be a little bit late so that, you know, they can, you know, appropriately mix up the staffing to cover what I was supposed to cover if I had been there on time. Argument with a spouse or a partner. Um, this is, you know, so one of the things that, or children, you know, happens in life um, and you leave that situation, don't have the time to really, you know, gather your thoughts, get yourself together, you know, check that anxiety at the door and that upsetness at the door before you move into seeing, to seeing patients or going to a meeting or, or interfacing with a client in another way. And so certainly one of the you can do if you're upset, you know, go to the bathroom or, you know, sit in the car, go to some place to create your quiet space so you can just regroup um, so that then you can be present in the here and now for whatever you need to, to deal with as you, as you move forward with the day. And then we already talked about how horrible it is not to get enough sleep. It really, you're, you're tired, you're on edge, you know, even simple things that never would otherwise bother you gets on your nerves, you're frustrated, you're tired, you know, people just want to kick you in a room and close the door behind you and lock you like, please don't let that person out today because they're really getting on my nerves. So, you know, one of the things that you can do for yourself is if you have the opportunity, again, where a lot of us are already at home, but the, the environment at home is just as stressful. You know, there's kids, there's all kinds of things going on at home that you would not otherwise have to deal with if you in the work setting. So working from home is truly not all it's cut out to be. There are just as many or even more distractions. So, you know, find a quiet place to, you know, go into a room shut it down for a minute, light your incense, you know, have a cup of something that's not got a lot of caffeine in it, but just do those things to just help yourself um, remain calm and get, you know, your sense of, of calmness back. Next slide, please. So again, renewing emotions, again, opposite of what we just talked about, these emotions and attitudes such as care and and tolerance, um, appreciation, um, create neurochemicals that regenerate our system and offset the energy drain. And this can result in increased um, Again, we know stress takes a toll in our bodies when we're constantly living in that fight or flight cycle and we don't have that opportunity to, to find, to resolve the issue and, and move out of that, um, that fight or flight cycle. Ultimately, our bodies being bathed in cortisol, you know, that leads to, you know, chronic medical conditions. That's certainly, again, the conversations and the space that I'm in, in terms of, you know, dealing with the longstanding health disparities, you know, in the Black community and communities of color, that's one of the things that really, um, you know, stresses our bodies and our systems and leads to these long-term, um, you know, long-term effects. And one of the things, I'm not going to talk so much about it here, but um, part of the conversation that's being had is how, the, the, one of the effects of racism is, is that it stresses the body. And again, I'm sure you've heard the term allostatic load. So just being um, faced with racism, you know, increases that allostatic load that people from um, marginalized and underserved and underrepresented communities are faced with literally on a daily basis that can really lead to the breakdown of our bodies as well as um, you know leading to chronic medical conditions on top of um, just the chronic stress that we have. 
So increased resilience to adversity when we have these renewing emotions, improved memory, improved problem solving, improved intuition and creativity. I can't underestimate that. When you, you know, are or in your moment and in that element, you are really more creative and more thoughtful. And we all have tuition. And when we're in that space where we can be more in tune with ourselves, our emotions, our thoughts, people will tell you stories about how much more intuitive they are and improve job performance and achievement. Again, we know that when we're, when, when we quote unquote, when we, you know, when we have our game on and have our game face on, we know that we have better job performance and better achievement. Next slide, please. So again, I'm not gonna go through each one of these, but um, some of the situations that and events that we are involved with that generally um, allow us to be in this space of energy renewing situations and, um, and moments. Again, hanging out with friends, hanging out with friends that you are, of course, and that you love being around and you have feelings of appreciation and love and care and concern. And so anytime you can put yourself in one of those situations where you feel loved and valued and appreciated for who you are, those situations where you feel like you belong, where you really truly feel that you can be your authentic self and all those things, you know, and all those hats and all those clothes that we have to cloak ourselves in, you know, to be presentable and acceptable by others, which is not necessarily a part of us. So being in that space and place where you can be in your authentic self is completely energizing. Next slide, please. So intelligent energy management, again, that's what we're going to sort of move into the, the heart math part of this. So basically what heart math allows us to do is intelligently, intelligently manage our energy and be thoughtful about it. And so resilience, optimal performance, fulfillment, and health are grounded in the intelligent management of energy expenditures and the ability to renew our energy. Next slide, please. So I'm gonna start talking. This is one of the, for me, let me tell you my, my personal experience. I've been practicing heart math for about gosh, 10 to 12 years now. And I first came by heart math at one of the AIHM conferences. The heart math group have been staunch supporters of the work of AIHM. And so that's where I first learned about it and first started um, practicing um, uh, heart math. So heart focused breathing is really the cornerstone of heart math. It's also the cornerstone of multiple other um, techniques, you know, and mindfulness-based techniques that we use to sort of center ourselves and to re-energize ourselves because breathing is energy. The lungs, you know, are the seat of energy um, in our bodies that bringing in, taking those deep breaths and bringing in that oxygen and then exhaling. So inhaling the things that we need and exhaling the things that we don't. Inhaling that positive energy and exhaling that negative energy. So heart focused breathing is the first step and most powerful tool as we practice heart math. And it's the first step in beginning to shift to a more coherent state where you are alert and calm at the same time. Some people think that, you, you know, that's, you know, you can't be both, you know, calm and alert at the same time. But certainly, you know, many of us as healthcare providers, as well as people that, um, that deal with emergencies, um, uh, you know, firemen, women, fire people, <laughs> I want to try to be gender neutral, we have to change some of those words, but people, you know, firefighters, that's a good one, isn't it? Firefighters, you know, and those, and, you know, those folks who present when there is, um, you know, there is a disaster. And certainly, as my work um, with the American Red Cross, you know, American Red Cross, that's, that's really one of the main two things, two things that the American Red Cross is known for. One, we collect blood. And the other thing that we are, are known for and probably most known for even over blood um, collection um, is disaster management. And whenever there's a disaster, the Red Cross is one of the first organizations to show up. And so we use this heart math technique with our staff and volunteers in the American Red Cross because we know it works and it helps them remain resilient because when they're out in the field as part of the disaster, they are there to provide services to people who have been affected by the disaster. And so 
you know, they're in that space as well, you know, trying to remain helpful, awake and alert and resilient to deal with the disaster, but they are also part, they are experiencing that trauma as well. So HeartMath is really, really important part of the work that we do at the American Red Cross. And so this can help us again, maintain our composure in challenging situations. And absolutely, again, with, with our American Red Cross staff, it's absolutely key for them to be able to have that active calm, be able to be calm in a situation, yet you know, understand all the things that need to, and critical things that need to be done when you're setting up you know, our disaster shelters and all those things that have to be done. Next slide, please. And so this technique, I'm going to talk about this tech now, technique now, but we're also going to have an opportunity to practice some of this technique. And this is called the heart math quick coherent technique. And this is the one that I use all the time. I use it in the morning before I wake up. You know, I help this, you know, as self-care when I wake up, when I go to bed, whenever I'm anxious and traveling over the last two weeks. And trust me, with all the flight cancellations and all the craziness going on in, um, uh, Court, I have this technique moment by moment by moment. So the first step in a quick coherence technique is to focus um, the attention around the area of the heart and imagine that we are breathing in and out through the heart center. And um, many of us do practice sort of squared breathing um, uh, or breathing technique where you inhale for five seconds and exhale for five seconds. But the breathing technique that you use is personal. It's whatever you're comfortable with. Next slide, please. And then the second step of quick coherence, and again, it's just this quick, is to make a sincere attempt to experience a regenerative and re-energizing feeling. And that's an the important word is feeling because when we're practicing heart math, the, the objective is really to get out of our heads and get into our bodies so that we re recreate and re-energize ourselves with those feelings that we've had in the past where we felt cared for, where we felt loved and appreciated and grateful for something or an experience that we had. Again, something, the love of a pet, anything that and it's personal what these regenerative and re-energizing feelings are. So whatever is important to you, you just focus on the area of the heart as you continue to breathe and recreate this regenerative feeling that just sort of washes over your body and, and gives you some, some energy and lift just practicing technique. It really just takes seconds to do. Next slide, please. And this technique, we're not going to practice this one, um, but this is another technique that is commonly used by, um, by others in the, and this is, is used in some particular circumstances. So this is an intelligent energy self-regulation technique called inner ease. Next slide, please. And so this ease is, is, is really about creating a balanced rhythm. So ease means that we move through our day sort of in a centered um, a space where, you know, mentally and emotionally we are, we are in a balanced rhythm. And so we're not feeling over anxious. We're not feeling depressed. We just sort of in that, in that sweet spot of just feeling, you know, I'm completely cool today. So inner ease, again, is not a sleepy headed state. You're, again, active calm, you're actively alert, but you're not overstressed and not anxious. And so inner ease is an aspect of stillness or calmness that we can access while on the move. Next slide, please. And so ease, again, is this active calm. And the example is that, you know, people who you know, respond to emergencies, emergency room physicians, healthcare providers, nurse practitioners, physicians assistants, all those people that have, you know, that job to be in the emergency room and deal with emergency, emergencies, EMTs, um, again, firefighters have to be on point, you know, and understand their surroundings, do a quick, you know, view of the surroundings, understand what's going on. So they need to be calm, yet active and understanding what their surroundings are and exactly what's going on. And that's exactly what our staff, um, 
need to be, our staff and volunteers at the Red Cross need to be in terms of when we are dealing with disaster management. And so this creates a sensitivity to the appropriate inner space. Because again, this is an inside job. You know, you have to know what makes what keeps you calm and as well as keeps your mind active yet your body calm. And this is, you know, you have to understand it and create your own um, appropriate inner space for handling each situation in life and be able to control that energy flow. Next slide, please. So inner ease application, some of the spaces where we would use and practice inner ease is um, when there is an important issue or to help you make better decisions, produce or prevent or reduce anger or feeling overwhelmed and anxious. Again, maybe there's a person that, you know, an individual constantly, you know, has to interact with that really, you know, gets on their nerves. It just sort of stretches them. They really don't want to be in the presence of this person, but they have to be for, you know, whatever reason. And it, it just always keeps them on edge and practicing inner ease can help prepare them for that situation. And, you know, it has been shown that practicing heart math can literally change the space and change the energy in a room. And I'd love to hear some stories um, about people's practice of, of heart math and you know how it has affected the general environment not just you know their own internal environment it helps us stay poised you know in the face of adversity helps us be judgment free and again being judgment free that's a really important part of the work that we're all um, probably you know embarking on in some aspects of our personal and professional lives in this you know this space of of, of health disparities and health inequities and helping, you know, people understand what they are, as well as helping open our own minds and hearts as to what structural racism and bias is, we have to be in a non-judgmental space to be open-minded about understanding um, what, what, you know, those conversations are and what they need to be. Next slide, please. I'm just going to go into the next one. And so again, we're not going to practice, but these are the steps for inner ease. Again, the first one, the 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 the, um, the primary technique that we use in all of heart math is, you know, focusing our breath um, and our attention on the on the area around the heart and breathing in and out through the heart center. Next slide, please. And with each breath. Again, draw in that feeling of inner ease that helps us to balance our mental and emotional energy. Again, each person has to identify where that inner space is that gives them that calm and ease that they can, can, can quickly go to in that space. And then next slide. And, and quickly, there is a question I just thought I'd ask here. Okay. Um, does heart math breathing distinguish between initiating breath in abdominal area versus the chest? Is that something that they... Um, think is important to clarify as you're talking about these breaths? Um, um, the heart math technique, again, is universally um, focused on the heart center. And again, we don't necessarily, we don't, I don't remember our conversation about having to breathe from the abdomen and from the diaphragm, but if that's what people are comfortable with, um, that is certainly, um, you, you know, everybody's individual practice, but um, we don't speak to how a person initiates their breath. We just speak to um, just taking those deep breaths in. Thank you. So thank you, that's a, a great question. Thank you so much. Next slide, please. And then the third aspect of inner ease is set a meaningful intention to anchor the feelings of inner ease as you engage in the project or you have to interface with this person that, you know, universally you are find to be difficult or <clears throat> again each and every one of us as you know as healthcare providers we find ourselves periodically in a situation where you're delivering you know disturbing painful news um, to you know a patient or a client or to a family member and so practicing this technique can help you be you know calm and present for what is going to transpire in this emotional moment as you share this information with a client or patient or, or with a family member. Next slide, please. So again, these are just the quick steps for um, inner ease, heart-focused breathing, 
draw in the feeling of inner ease and calm and then anchor and maintain those feelings so that it can help you walk through and be present for that stressful situation that you are about to encounter. Next slide, please. So now we're actually going to take some time in just a few minutes and actually practice the heart math quick coherent technique. So I invite you to get comfortable and comfortable means different things to different people. So I just invite you to seek whatever level of comfort that is yours. So in this place and space of comfort, I invite you to focus your attention in the area of the heart. And imagine your breath is flowing in and out of the heart or this area of the chest. So take a deep breath in. If it's comfortable for you, you can do it on a count of five. But it's entirely up to you. And then exhale on a count of five. So as you take the next breath, try to in, breathe in even deeper. Mm, expanding those lungs to the maximum capacity. It feels so good to do that. Take a deep breath in. <sighs> Exhale it all the way out. And as we breathe in deeply and exhale deeply, the next step is to re-experience a feeling of joy and gratefulness and thankfulness and appreciation for something or someone in your life. And I'd like to encourage you to be expansive in that, in that feeling. And our feelings are not bound by time or space or place. That regenerative feeling may be something you experienced as a child. It may be something that you are experiencing in the moment. It can also be something that you think about that you want for yourself, for the future. So what we desire in our lives is not bound by time. Those things that we are great for is not bound by time or space. So please just let yourself be as expansive in this space of feeling grateful, cared for, thankful. Let's just sit with this for a moment as we breathe in and breathe out and sit in this moment of gratitude and thankfulness and caring.
So thank you so much for sharing your time with me today and allowing me to help support your, your life, your ability to access self-care so that, so that you can be present for yourself first and then be able to be present for others, secondary, and show yourself love and caring and appreciation because self-care actually is, remember it's an inside job. So keep that in your head that I gotta work on me first before I can be present and be of service to others. So again, thank you so much. I really appreciate this moment and- Thank, thank you, you so all. much, Dr. Miller. <laughs> Thank you. Thank I'll you. I'll turn it back over to Jess. Answer questions. Yes, Look there are a, a few questions okay. here in the, the Q&A. So I'm really happy. I mean, just a lot of people saying thank you too. Like that. Thank you so much. I feel regenerated just taking Welcome. that. Welcome. Thank you so much. And, and again, if somebody wants to tell a story that practices heart math, tell your personal story of, of how you use it and how it's been helpful to you, we would love to invite those as well. But I'll take some questions. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, Neil asked, you know, uh, that they did the training many years ago or what training opportunities are there currently for healthcare professionals, if you know um, that. I did share the link to the HeartMath um, Institute uh, in the chat earlier. I can pop that in again. Yeah. Um, yes, there are. Oh, my gosh. HeartMath has grown so much over the years. They have programs, many programs devoted to, you know, supporting uh, healthcare providers. So absolutely go to the website. Some of the courses are free um, because they know that you know, healthcare providers and people that provide services are stressed out today more than ever. And so there are some courses that, that are certainly free and they have groups within um, heart math that you can join just to be you know in the space of people practicing heart math there's no cost to join these groups and um so please just go take um, a look at that and many organizations i saw um, one of the students um, said that they have been taught the heart math technique as but also many um, hospitals and healthcare institutions are offering heart math to their employees. And one of the things that we do at the Red Cross, so um, when COVID uh, first uh, presented, um, the Kaiser Fine Family Foundation, working with um, the heart math team, provided some funding for some folks at Red Cross to be trained in heart math heart math technique. So myself and Linda uh, McIntyre, who's the chief nurse of the American Red Cross, we volunteered to be trained and um, certified as heart math um, instructors. And it's just been joy for me to, to share this work with my organization and really, again, bring this to our, our staff, all of our staff, but you know, definitely have it available for our staff um, for deployment, who are on deployment to deal with disasters. So thank you for that question. Yes, absolutely. There is another question about whether you'll be speaking on HRV and biofeedback devices, or do you have anything to discuss around that, those subjects at all? Um, absolutely. So those, um, these are heart rate variability devices that are part of the heart math training. And again, just go to the website. There is one that is really excellent. It clips onto your ear, actually. I have one of those devices. And so it's, it's literally, a, you know, the, we used to use the word biofeedback, but it, it, you know, it certainly monitors heart rate variability. And it just gives you this excellent visual of when you're you know, inside the zone and when you're outside the zone. And so those devices are available. And so they do help us really you know, with a visual understand when we're in the zone and when we're not within the zone. And so that we get used to what it feels like. Remember, I talked about how important it is when we, we're practicing heart math to, to recreate those feelings of when you're calm, because what heart 
math does is helps us understand um, and, and these devices help us understand and get a visual of when we are in that zone of feeling relaxed and active in that area of active calm. So I do encourage you to go onto the website and honestly, they constantly, you know, you can sign up for the website for free. They have these different programs as well as these different offers where you can take classes, where you can get the device for free. So there's so many things on the website. I do encourage you to join for free, surf some of the offers um, in terms of being trained to do this, but also check with your healthcare provider, your insurance company. Some of them do offer this um, access to this technique um, as well as what's a you um, through your your employer and is your um, employee health program may offer some of this as well. And I would say if they don't offer it, give them a suggestion to offer it. Absolutely. And I think in the chat, um, the person said that it should be taught in medical school. I don't know that they were saying that oh, it actually okay, okay. is, <laughs> but how lovely, you know, would that be? But so. it sure it is. <laughs> exactly. And someone so, just popped Someone just popped a message in the chat about free stuff on the on the website. Yeah, there's a it's like heartmath.com versus I think there's heartmath.org. I don't know what the difference is there, but there is um, two links, I think, or two websites, perhaps when I when I searched it. Yes, um, heartmath.org might be the professional component. I, I, I just go to, I do go to heartmath.org and maybe that's for trainers. I'm, I excuse me because I don't know the, um, the difference, but um, between those two, but I will find out so I can answer that question next time. No worries. Yeah, I think, cause it said like, that's the Institute and then maybe heartmath.com um, perhaps just has even more res resources. It sounds ah, like. I actually, like it. I believe that's honestly. true, actually. Yes, I believe that's true. Right. So, great. so thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Anna, Thank you. for sharing that. And um, I don't think we're going to be able to bring Anna to offer to bring some of her to share her experience forward. And I don't know that we're going to be able to to have time for that or that I know how to do that actually in this webinar format. So I'm afraid we won't. If you want to share something in the chat, a little bit about your chat. experience. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe. Thank you. You know, we 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 love to hear about that and we'd love to share in your experience and perhaps we can have another time where we share a little bit more around that oh um, i will i would love to do a you know a return performance so whenever there's space jess i would love to come okay. back and absolutely and you did put your um your uh my, email, my email address. address yes i did absolutely absolutely so, you can contact me that would be excellent um and yeah, and Anna wrote in the chat that I love using heart math with patients and other hospital staff members. People love connecting with their heart's intelligence. Mm -hmm. So I think absolutely that's excellent. It is, it is real. It is absolutely real. It is. That's, and again, it's been a saving grace for me over the years. Yes, it has. Yeah, changed a life changing. And yeah, I can see the benefits in just a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. taking yeah, Anna that said that. Moment. It has changed her life. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much again, Dr. Miller. Like this has been an incredible little bit of time we've carved out here with you on on a Friday when a storm's coming your way. I know so. you can see. I think you can see it getting darker, it's getting darker. And darker. <laughs> it is. Yes, so it's it, just about ready to. The sky is getting just about ready to, to. I didn't turn the lights on. This is just ambient light, so you can see how <laughs> dark it's getting. I need to turn on the exactly. light, but um, but you can see well, how dark it's getting. And I want to mention too that you will be at the um, the academy conference this October. And Absolutely. So I'm just putting the link in the chat, and I'm going to quickly share a few um, slides here as we close out to remind everyone that you can register to join us in um, in person in San Diego um, this October and see Dr. Miller there and. Um, we also, it will be available online as well, because we know not everyone is able to travel. So that is available right now. And there's even like a 4th of July discount going on if you use this <laughs> discount code, I think by before the, before next, the end of next week. So I want to just remind everyone about that. 
And um, thank you so much to everyone for being part of our global community. We're really um, leading integrative health and it, we can't do it without all of you in our community um, and you, Dr. Miller, for all the work that you do in our You're community. You're welcome. You are so <laughs> welcome. And I have to give a shout out to Kavita. Um, That's one of our uh, AIHM. I think she's a fellow. Hello. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I just met her last I was doing a training about Accu Detox. See, we trained her. Um, she's a new Accu Detox um, practitioner, and it was just such a beautiful um, opportunity to meet her. And so we're going to partner awesome. together Yay. and do some other things. Yeah, we're going to partner and do some other things. It yes, is. that's a beautiful thing. I Team, love the tentacles imagine of Imagine what's possible when we synergize and we it amplify is. together. So that's yeah. what. We're here working to do yeah. with each and every one of you. Yeah. And, and, another, um, mm -hmm. and another sneak preview is that what I'm going to be talking about at the conference in October is going to be um, AccuDetox, the Lincoln Detox, the Lincoln um, Detox Center um, story um, where they use the Black Panthers. Oh my God, it's a sneak preview. The Black Panthers, the Young Lords and community activists created this AccuDetox auricular acupuncture technique to to as an adjunctive tool um, to support people going through addiction treatment. It is so powerful. So please get ready. I'm excited for that. Please. You gotta believe. Get registered <laughs> for the annual conference. It's gonna be real. <laughs> Absolutely. That is going to be a highlight for sure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you to everyone here. Bye, everybody. And yes. So much love. Be careful. Be safe out there this weekend. Yes. Love to each of you. Take good care. Bye. Thank you so much, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.